Hi, Heather. Hi there. Hey, it's Tim. And I uh, just want to uh, talk with you a little bit about the open house. You came and visited the, uh, the open house I had on Saturday. And uh, do we have much chance to stand around and talk? No, you're busy the whole time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even, not even sure when you swooped in there. All of a sudden, I looked up, and there you were. When you walked in the door, just guessing about how many people were in the house. When I first walked in, I would say about six. Okay. Maybe uh, two or three groups. Two or three groups. Yeah. Let's talk about groups because I like to. I use the term group for buying buying groups. Um, so yeah, I think they were probably somewhere in that neighborhood. We were pretty busy. Um, and, uh, then you stood there and kind of observed, what did you see? I saw a steady stream of people. I think there might've been a, maybe a five or a 10 minute window in the hour where there weren't people, but just a lot of interested people. And even if, you know, most of them didn't seem when I was there, they weren't interested in that house in particular. They thought it was, the rooms were a little small, but very interested in learning more about other properties. Right. Yeah, so we had a lot of people, a lot of face-to-face -face, um, contacts, didn't we? Mm-hmm. And you, you were there about an hour? Yes, I was there about one hour. Okay. In that hour, about how many buying groups do you think came through the home? I would say that while I was there, I would say at least 12, but maybe 12 to 15. Yeah, pretty, and that was, yeah, and as I told you, when you were kind of arranging that time, I said, that's typically our slow time, but it didn't turn out to be. It uh, it was kind of that way all day long. Would it surprise you to learn we had over 50 buying groups come through that house? No, I, wouldn't, I guess it wouldn't really surprise me since you were there quite a few hours with the number of people I saw in the one hour. Yeah, in that but one that, hour. That'd be great. I mean, that's great for an open house, though, for sure. Yeah, it's not your... Uh, it's not your father's open house, as they say, you know, it's not your, not the old run of the mill, um, mm -hmm. sleepy sort of open house. We have plenty of time to talk. In fact, I think we got so busy, um, that you actually wound up talking to some people, didn't you? Kind of keeping them busy until I got a chance to talk with them, huh? Yeah. It looks like you could, uh, you could, you could have used some help for the overflow. So I yeah. jumped in and talked to the one group as they were closer to the door. Yeah. So thank you. There until you're ready. Thank you. Way to step in and, and, uh, you know, jump in and help out, roll up your sleeves. Yeah, we had three people, myself, my lender, and Christina, who does the marketing, all my marketing, she was there, and we uh, still couldn't, and we still needed you. And at that, you know, during that time, and there were, we actually did have a few people float in and out that we just did not even make contact with. We were, we were just so busy. Mm -hmm. um, now, what did you yeah, notice? Yeah, I did see a couple of uh, uh, slip out the door. Yeah. That's why I thought... I could maybe um, start working, work in the room for you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it could easily be two agents uh, and a lender and a, thir and, and a third, or, 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 you know, at least, well, we had three, as I said, and we still had overflow. Um, so what, uh, what did you notice when you are in the open house that made it a little different? Did you, did you see we were interacting with people, they were talking, they were wanting um, – additional, you know, we, we were conversing with them. What what did you see that made that happen? What I liked was I liked that you had different talking points up on the walls. And as you're walking in, I liked the sign that talked about a list being available, bank owned list. I think there were a lot of people interested in, it was a good price point, 160, and a lot of people interested in good deals. And it was a nice, um, cosmetically nice home. Right. And I think people seemed interested in looking at the list that you had. They liked the, um, that you had the finance person there who was explaining the different programs and even pre, kind of pre-qualifying them a little bit as they were there. Yep. And I liked that you were interacting with the people that you know what you're talking about and the finance person knew what he was talking about. Yeah. So people felt comfortable giving their information. They were willingly giving phone numbers and addresses and that kind of thing and yeah. what they were looking for. Yeah. It seemed like a pretty good lead. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you're right. And, you know, from the past, my past experiences, people tend to be a little standoffish. They're a little guarded when they walk into an open house. They just, you know, they understand they're walking into a sales situation. And so their sales resistance is up. And you notice that what we do and, and the, the, as you use the good term, talking points that we use and the, um, and the kind of system, I would say, track 
that that we use to engage them just totally seems to lower that. And I think it also helped that there were so many people that other people kind of got excited about it. It's just like when you're walking up to show a house and there's another couple looking at it, they get a little more excited to come in and they're afraid to lose the deal. Right. Um, it seemed like that too. It's nice to see the traffic and then the other people, they're not the only ones. And True. so they lingered around a little bit, even waiting for you to be <clears throat> done talking to the other people, right. you know, which is nice. Yeah, and you probably, and I know you made a comment about this, that when I was talking to one group, I was actually talking to, I think, at least two, if not three groups at one time when I was kind of giving a little quick presentation on how we save them the $53,000, right? Okay, yep. I and heard uh, you did a good job at that, and they seemed uh, seemed pretty interested in it. It's an, at least it's something that engages them, even if, um, yeah, and it's, an, it's uh you might say good bait. I mean, hey, how am I going to save fifty-three thousand dollars on this house? And so that's usually something that either someone will ask or will bring it up. Um, hey, are you, so you probably saw the sign that said save fifty-three thousand. Um, uh -huh. yeah. And uh, would you like to know how how you can do that? And you know, I mean, no one says no. So <laughs> sooner or later, we're going to have that conversation, which leads them to to. Uh, which helps them understand that we're about a whole lot more than just selling a house. We're going to save them money. Cool. Any, what are, any other observations? No, it just seemed like a, a, a busy environment, and it's nice to see an open house, like you said, that is uh, busy and not just standing, you know, where agents are standing around. So it looked like a really successful open house. How would you compare the quality of a lead that you have where you have a face-to-face -face interaction and actually build some, some good rapport and connection with these people versus, say, an Internet lead? Oh, I think it's, there's not really a comparison. You already meet the people, and like you said, you build a rapport. You find out they're a little more open when they're face-to-face, -face, and they'll give you more information about what they're really looking for. They're already in an area in a place where they've come to the home, so you're, you know what they're Look at your, some of their parameters are. They're looking at a three bedroom, two bath in that neighborhood under 200. Um, and so I think it's a good lead. You, yeah. you already spoke to them and, and you pre-qualified some of them. So it sounds, it sounds to me like I, I would be, I would expect that you would get a good percentage of the leads that you took down that day. Yeah, the barriers go way down. Well, I know James did um, at least a half a dozen pre-quals on Sunday following the open house, we had one party that wanted to write an offer on the house, um, and then when they found out there were going to be multiple offers, they backed out, or they, they decided not to, but that's they were ready to write an offer, and, and I had a, an appointment with them on Sunday to do that. Um, then the sun came out on Sunday. That didn't help either. I got the feeling they were already like, oh, we're going to you know, go do something else. Can we do that a different day? That's what they said. Can we do that you know, tomorrow or Tuesday? And I said, well, it'll actually be too late because there's going to be multiple offers, and I explained how that works with a bank-owned property, and if you're not in round one, you're not going to get it, you know, you're out. Mm -hmm. So um, so they kind of thought about it and called back and said, well, you know, I think, you know, a little too much pressure. So anyway, but they're going to actually, there's two buying groups in that particular group right there, so he, uh, there's that party, and then there's another one that's going to buy a $400,000 house in the Issaquah Bellevue area. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, you're right. We got a lot of good leads, and the other cool thing is, some of the leads, as you well know, uh, all, this is always the way it is, aren't going to buy right now. So we've got a bunch more people we can put in our database and incubate those people and uh, keep connected. But now that they've met us and they know who we are and we do a good job of keeping them, uh, you know, dripping or dripping on them with the drip campaigns and keeping them linked up, uh, the chances of someone else getting them is pretty slim. I, and it's not unusual to have people that will slip, slip right over to us um, even if they're already working with someone because of the strong talking points that we have and the way that we give them so much extra um, Yeah, I was surprised value. that nobody there actually, not one person said they had a realtor and they all were willing to give you their information. Isn't that crazy? I didn't see anyone that not give you their information. Yeah, and again, that's the power of, this, of, the, of the process. It's not, you know, obviously not the first thing we hit them with. We build some rapport, we talk with them, we get them talking, and then Boom. I mean, you know, once they've kind of told you some basic stuff and part of their life story, they just give us their name and their email address and usually even get their phone number. And, um, and again, yeah, we've gotten better at it. We were doing this for a year, and I didn't have that good a success at the 
the beginning, getting all that. But we've we've honed down our um, our uh, talking points, our script, for not, lack of a better term. You know, the only thing that separates the really big hitters from the people that don't is you know who, the number of people they have to talk to and what they have to say to them. So the script is powerful. Good. All right. Well, thanks again for your time. Heather is with Better Properties Proctor, right? Right, I am. And I'm with Better Properties Lakewood. And what's your other job, Heather? I, I do some reporting for a local uh, television station. Okay, yeah. You're a um, television reporter. So. Right, so just part-time. My, my main job is real estate. Cool. So if you've heard Heather Radal's name, that might be why, unless you bought a house from her, which was unlikely if you're a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Uh -huh.